Hello everyone, and welcome to my YouTube series. In this episode, of, we will be teaching you how to install the pathfinding plugin for Mindflare to allow your bot to move from point A to point B, avoiding obstacles as needed. As you can see, I have a simple bot set up here. There's our bot. But he doesn't currently do anything. I'm going to start by allowing the bot to follow me as a player. To get started, we are going to install the Pathfinding plugin. Mindflare-Pathfinder is currently the most recommended plugin for Pathfinding at the time of making this video. It is the most active and maintained plugin as well as the most feature rich. This will be the one I am using for this video. Going into our bot code, we're going to import our Pathfinder plugin. Implementation of this is a little bit different than it was for installing Mindflare. As you can see here, I'm using brackets for loading Pathfinder, but no brackets for using Mindflare. This is because instead of loading the entire library, I only want to load just the plugin loader part of it. In this case, Pathfinder is the plugin loader for the plugin, so I only want to load the plugin loader part of it. After creating the bot, I can pass the plugin to the plug to the bot to be loaded. This will cause the plugin to load to the bot as soon as the bot finishes connecting to the server. In Mindflayer, all bot actions are asynchronous. When you, as soon as you create a bot, it creates a request a request to connect to the server, but the bot has not yet connected. It is still in the process of connecting. By using the load punk plugin function, this will tell the bot to load the plugin as soon as the connection is established and the bot has joined the server. After the bot has joined the server, we want to start running some commands. In this case, we want to follow player. Here I'm using the once keyword instead of the on keyword. All functions are nearly identical with the exception that the once keyword is guaranteed to only run one time. The listener will remove itself after the first call. In this case we only want to run this code right when the bot joins the server, but if it happens to die or reconnect we do not want it to run it again. We only run it one at one time. After we can connect, we're going to try to get my character from the from the bot. Bot.players is a list or a map of all players on th that the bot is currently aware of. By passing a player's name to this function, we can return the player object for that player, which contains all information about that player. If the player is currently not online, this information will be null, so we want to run a check for that. In this case, if I do not happen to be online, or am too far away from the bot and have not loaded, the bot will run that, I can't, that it cannot see me and do nothing. If I have joined the game and the bot is aware of my presence, we can create. We can now continue and run a command to have the bot follow me. Now, we're going to need to start by loading something called Minecraft data. Minecraft data is an NPM module which contains various information about Minecraft, and such as loaded blocks, block IDs, entities, items, and so on. This information is required by the Pathfinder plugin to effectively operate. Loading, this, loading the Minecraft data plugin or module 
is slightly different than loading other libraries. In this case, you want it loads as a function directly, and we need to pass in the version of, the Mi of Minecraft we want to load. Bot.version contains the Minecraft version string of the server it just connected to. So we can load that version into Minecraft data. So we only want, but as version is only assigned after the bot has connected to the server, we only want to run this command, loading Minecraft data, after the bot is connected. Any events triggered by Mineflayer bots are run after the server is connected. So it is safe to run this function inside any event triggered by the bot. Now that we have loaded Minecraft data, we can pass it into the movement object. A movement the movement data, the movement class, is a class loaded by mountainflare-pathfinder. This contains information such as specifics for how to move the bot. This is information such as what blocks can be moved over, uh, what blocks can be edited, what blocks should be avoided, and so on. If we want over to GitHub, we can find the details for Pathfinder. So, by searching caring slash Pathfinder, we can find the information about usage and more detailed about what it's currently capable of, roadmaps, and so on. Another way of loading plugins, as you can see here, instead of using the brackets, is to use the dot functionality as shown here. I'm going to continue using the bracket functionality for the sake of preference. However, this is up to you, whichever you find more visually appealing. As you can see here, we pass the Minecraft data version to the movements object in order to get the Pathfinder loaded. So after the, after the bot spawns, it will attempt to locate my character. If it cannot, it will complain in chat and do nothing. If it is able to find my character, it will load the Minecraft data library with, for the correct Minecraft version and create a new movements configuration for that Minecraft data and the given bot. We are going to move, send this movements object to the Pathfinder plugin. The Pathfinder plugin can be accessed using bot.pathfinder. This only needs to be done once per program per, uh, per, uh, per program run. However, you are free to do as many times as you want to if you have different configurations that need to be used. The goal follow is also another class that is loaded by the Pathfinder plugin. We can use that here. Or actually, oh, sorry, sorry about that. The goal follow is a module within Pathfinder goals, which allows the bot to follow a given entity. This can be used for following a player, moving to a mob to attack it, or following an item dropped in order to pick it up. Here we're going to try and follow the player. As specified in the Pathfinder plugin uh, specifications, we can actually pass in the goal of the player, as I guess it's not shown here, but I we can pass in my player in order to follow my player. We can then assign this goal to Pathfinder. Here I'm using the word true. This is because the player is currently moving, I will be moving around. By passing true here, this will mean to check to see if I have moved every frame 
to, see, to try and calculate a new path. If you do not put true here, it'll only count where I was as soon as the, goal, the path was initially started. It will not check my location in any other frame. We want to continue checking my frame my location every time I move, so we're going to pass in true here. One quick thing I forgot to note to mention is that the follow distance radius must be specified here. This is how close the bot will attempt to get to the blip, to the target entity before stopping. Now, if we run our bot, we can look in game and notice that our bot is following us, swimming through water and climbing blocks as needed. If we walk away, our bot will continue following us. If it cannot reach us, such as if we are in the air, it will attempt to get as close as possible before stopping, in this case, that location right there. If we do have, by default, bots will be able to stack, use scaffolding to reach a target if it is not currently able to. These scaffolding blocks are listed as cobblestone and dirt, but this can be configured. So if we throw some cobblestone in on the bot, It will stack up to try to get us. If we go over here to this house thing, it will bridge over using the cobblestone. If we do not want the bot to bring to be able to place blocks, we can configure that here in the movements. If looking at the source code for Mindflare-Pathfinder, we can see that the scaffolding blocks is stored basically as an array of blocks. Here you can see that it contains dirt and cobblestone to be loaded through this approach right here. If we set this to an empty list and start our bot, Even though it has cobblestone, it cannot bridge across. Hopefully this tutorial covers the basics for implementing a simple pathfinding bot into your code. Thank you all very much for showing up and have a wonderful day.